Now I'm calling this episode image compositing, working with different aspect ratios. I had some issues today when I was doing the, putting this tutorial together. I thought this was going to be a real breeze and go together real quickly for me, but I had problems because my images were different aspect ratios. And I'm going to show you how to overcome that problem, especially when you're working with uh, Photoshop and moving into Topaz Mask AI and doing the actual compositing in Mask AI because I love doing it that way because there's some really great tools for marrying your two images together. So I'm going to show you how to fix that issue. This is going to be a good one for you. So without any further ado, let's get started. So I have this really cool image of this owl right here. I don't like its aspect ratio, but I want to composite it onto this background here. Now, I like the aspect ratio of this image here. It's more of a conventional type aspect ratio, but I'm going to have an issue here when I go to uh, composite this. Now, if I use uh, Mask AI as a standalone app, I absolutely can't do it. Um, so Mask AI is great for compositing basic images where you don't have to change aspect ratios and sizes and things like that. But if you need to change the size of your image, for instance, I need to mask this image onto this image here. Okay. Now I did this in Photoshop. Now you can basically use any editing software that will uh, work with Topaz. You know, I happen to use Photoshop and a lot of people do use Photoshop, but, but any kind of editing software, possibly Affinity Photo, you could possibly do this. I'm not hundred percent sure. I haven't tried it, but I know we can do it in Photoshop, but I had some issues and I'm going to show you those issues. I'm, I'm going to show you the wrong way to do it first, which was the, which was the way I thought would have been the right way. But that didn't work. And then I'll show you the proper way of doing it. And it's going to help you when you go to uh, use Mask AI for composites. Because there's one feature in Mask AI that I really like where you can add the background right in Composite AI and then kind of match the two images up. But you'll see that all coming up here shortly. So next we're going to be in Photoshop and I'll show you the wrong way and then I'll show you the right way. Here's my owl uh, image in Photoshop. So what I need to do is get the crop tool because remember, I don't like this aspect ratio and I'm just using a basic crop here, uh, four by six, two by three aspect ratio crop, which is going to be perfect for the, for my interpretation of this image today. So what I'm going to do is just make my crop bigger. I'm just going to have these edges touch the sides on the left and right here. See, as I pull this up, as soon as it touches the side, I'm good. Now I need to determine where I want my owl to sit in my, uh, in my composite. And I want my owl to sit kind of the owl in the center right here, in the rule third right here, somewhere around in there. So I have some space at the top and space at the bottom. Now all I need to do is click the check mark here. Now you don't have to delete crop pixels or do anything like that, but just give that a check. Now you'll notice I have transparency on the bottom of the owl and transparency on the top of the owl. And that's good. So originally when I did this, I was all proud of myself and I said, okay, Dave, all you need to do now is come up here to filter and open up uh, Topaz Mask AI and add that background. And when this comes back into Photoshop, you'll be good to go. And here we are inside of uh, Topaz Mask AI. Now I'm not going to do a real good masking job here. I'm just going to do a quick, simple select my subject. And I'd have to refine it a little bit because it missed a couple areas on here. But that's cool because uh, I want to show you the, the problem I had, okay? So I'll just click Compute Mask. And there's my owl cutout. Now, again, it missed spaces because I did not do a good job here. But let's go to background. The second step would be we'd go to background. I'd click on image, click load image. And here's my image right here. So I double click it and it throws that image behind my owl, right? Now, again, I'm not going to refine it and work with all the background and the foreground yet. I'm going to do that upcoming when I show you the right way of doing this, okay? But, however, there it is. Now, let's pretend it was done and it was beautiful and it was complete. I'm going to click Apply, and I have two choices, Transparent or Composite. Now, remember, I'm compositing using uh, Mask AI right inside of Mask AI, I'm compositing, okay? So, I need to send it back to Photoshop as a composite. Now, when I click Composite, I thought... Hey, this is awesome, but look at my problem. I still have the transparent area on the bottom of the top, you know, so, hey, Houston, we have an issue here. We have a problem. What did I do wrong? So it took me a while to figure this out, but I figured it out and I want to share it with all my YouTube family. Okay, so here's how I do it. Let's go ahead and delete this layer 
And then the only thing you need to do is come down to your adjustment layers, click that and go to solid color, give that a click. Now it can be any color you want. I'm just gonna use black and click okay. Now I've covered black over my image here. And uh, all I need to do though is take this color fill layer and drag it under my original layer, the, the owl layer, okay, which was layer zero. And now this is very important. And if you don't do this, it's not gonna work. So if you go into Mask AI right now, you're gonna have that same scenario. Only you're still gonna have black on the top and bottom, okay? So all you need to do, and I've showed you this so many times, and the shortcut is you have to merge everything together. The shortcut is Shift, Option, Command, or Control E. That merges everything together on one layer. And now all you need to do is come up to Filter and go and launch Mask AI. And this time it will work for you. Now here we are inside of Mask AI. So let's do the same thing where we come up and click Subject. And let's let Mask AI do its thing for us here. Now like I said, it missed a couple spots here. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller and just fix up some of these little spots like right here and here. Get rid of this area right here. I'm just going to paint that away with some red paint. And um, maybe add a little extra blue right here. I'm looking all around the edges here. See if it missed anything. Maybe a little up in here. Right like so. Oh, and this area right between the owl's legs here. Let's get that too. And now let's go ahead and click Compute Mask. Let's go ahead and grab our background. So just come over here towards this background. Click on that. Click on Image. Click load image and I'm going to double click the image right here or you could just click it and hit open but I just like to double click it and there it comes there it is now we have to determine is this going in the right direction and is it filling up the screen at this point I like to go to a uh, one pane view just so we can see the image in all its glory let's go ahead and uh, click on keep now we can see our image composite Okay, there it is. And we can see we have some issues that we got to take care of on here. Let's go ahead and click Transform and make our image a little smaller. And let's grab this handle right here and pull up on it. It'll maintain the aspect ratio. Just overexpand the image just a little bit to make sure we have uh, everything covered here. And that looks really good. Now, I'm looking at this image here. I see light coming on the owl on its right side. And if you look at this image... It seems like light is coming from the left, even from the sky here, as well as the way it's hitting these pine trees. Looks like the shadows are on the right of the pine tree. And so what we need to do is flip that horizontally, get it going the opposite direction. That way it'll make sense, okay? And I'm kind of happy with this. We can move this around a little bit, and I just might move this. Oh, let's see. I might move this. No, nah, I'm trying to, I'm looking for this pine tree. Where do I want to sit on that owl's wing? Maybe, maybe like right there. I think that looks good. Make sure I got this all filled in on the bottom. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Then we all, all we have to do is click transform and we're good. And now we go back to our tri map, but not a problem. All we need to do is see where it says show tri map. You can click this and there's the original image with the black behind it, right? But now when we click on this little apple icon here, we can go to keep and there's our background. Now we're going to do some refining. Uh, wait a second. I changed my mind on the refining. I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to try to uh, match these two images up first. So the first thing I want to do is add a blur to the background. So the blur uh, slider is right at the bottom here. And just start to drag it to the right. And we're going to try to find a blur that kind of looks good with this image. And I'm thinking, let's start out right around there. We can always come back and change it. Now see where it says adjust this drop down menu. We're on the background so we can adjust the exposure and match this image in here. I'm going to start by pulling the saturation back a little bit on the background. I feel it's just a little bit oversaturated. I might play with the temperature and tint. Let me see. Do I want to, uh, I want to cool this down a little bit, make that water a little, little more on the blue side. That's too much, maybe somewhere around there. And let's shift the tint. If I go to the right, I'll make it more magenta. See that? But if I go to the left, I'll make it a little more on the green side. And yeah, something like that. I think that looks a little more natural. I wasn't really happy with that background color on this image. So something like that. And now do we want to uh, lighten up the background a little bit? 
Yeah, maybe a very slight lightning in the background, and it's not very contrasty. There's a little more contrast on the owl, so we'll take care of that in a second. And let me see what else do I need to do. I think it looks really pretty good at this point. Let's go to adjust and change it from background to foreground. Now let's work with the owl a little bit. I'll start by pulling the owl saturation back just a little bit, like right around there. And uh, we have some magenta in this background here. So let's throw a little bit of a magenta cast. See, I don't want to go too much like that. Obviously, that looks horrible. You look horrible, Mr. Owl with magenta on you but just a little magenta because we do have magenta in the image and um this blue in the water so let's maybe cool him off just a little bit and again we don't want to go too much see because we'll really cool him off but i just want to add a little bit of blue tin here i'm just trying to match things up now i'm going really quick here normally when i'm doing a composite i'm taking my time because you want to match these things up perfectly so forgive me and you know and because, again, it's a tutorial and I don't want to take too much time here, but I'm going to get it close. And let me see. Let's play with his uh, contrast because I felt he was a little too contrasty, remember, compared to the background here. So let's pull back the contrast on the owl. That's too much, but a little bit. Get him a little less contrasty. And now let's open up his shadows a bit here or a lot. Let's maybe somewhere right around there. It's looking pretty good. And so not bad. And maybe just a slight, and I mean maybe a 0.01 right there of exposure. Yeah, for the tutorial's sake, I think it's okay. Now we're going to refine the owl. Let's go ahead and come here and click on refine. And then we have these refining tools here. Now, I don't use many of these tools in here. I mainly use like the edge shift, foreground recovery, and defringe. Uh, I'm going to start out by pulling the foreground, foreground recovery and watch the edges of the bird. I'll zoom in a little bit here for you. And I'm going to start moving this to the right and see how it just kind of cleans it up. I don't want to go too far here, but somewhere around in there. And then I'm going to get my brush. Now, our brushes now live over on the left-hand side here. I'm going to get my compute brush, and you can see I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. But see that little bit of blue right in here? I'm just going to paint the compute brush right there and see what it does. Yeah, and that looks good. Right there. Let me get this little area right in here. That's nice. Maybe right here. Okay, and right here. I got to whisper when I'm doing this, you know. Let's get it right there one more time. Yeah, and just come around here one more time. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll pull my recovery up a little bit here. Okay, I don't want to go too much. I think right around there. And let's refine a little bit around here. I'm just using the compute brush for this. There's a little miss right here. Cleans it up. Again, take your time. I'm going to go around this. I'm calling this a leg. Is it a leg? <laughs> Forgive me if I'm wrong. I, I, I'm sure I'll get it wrong. It's probably not a leg. Just going to go around the edges here. Okay. And you can also uh, shift the edge in a little bit. Just move this to the left. I don't want to go too much, but yeah, a little bit there is good. Maybe around like a 20. Yeah, that looks better on the leg right there. And again, I'm looking up in here around this wing here. I'm just going to come around here with the compute brush. Yeah, that looks okay. Might have missed a little spot right here. Sorry, I get real quiet when I'm doing this. Maybe right here. A little bit of blue in there. And again, forgive me if I miss something. I'm sure somebody's going to say, Dave, you missed something. But you know, if you miss something when you're in Photoshop, man, you can always fix it in Photoshop. You've got cloning tools. You've got a whole kind of stuff in there. Healing brushes. You can fix things. But I think it's good. I'm going to take one last look at it here. Okay, I'm calling it done. Mistakes and all, if there are mistakes. Hopefully, hopefully there aren't. So I'm going to come down and click apply. And now remember, I have two choices, transparent or composite. I want to send it back as a composite. So let's click composite. And we're back in Photoshop. And I was like, internally, I was thinking, please have the whole screen filled in and, you know, not have that 
that uh, panoramic view with the black showing around it on my image. I didn't want that, you know, like, like this, right? As you can see, this technique really works. And now your whole image is filled in. And now at this point, you could do whatever you want, you know, do further editing on it, you know, put a vignette around it, turn it into a painting. Hey, whatever you want to do, fix up any little issues. If you got, you know, like a, like there's a little blue right here that might have missed. I can just clone that out or, yeah, clone it out, heal it out, whatever I need to do. So anyway, there it is, uh, compositing inside of Mask AI. Well, there you go, compositing uh, using Photoshop and then going into Mask AI, doing the actual composite in Mask AI. But as I showed you, I had some issues at the beginning trying to match up the two images with the proper aspect ratios. And I showed you the problem and I showed you how to fix it. So hopefully this is going to help you out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it.